Life is precious, we all know that. But we also know that anything can happen at any moment that we might not be prepared for. And it's in these moments that a little common sense and some brain power can mean the difference between life and death. The smell of it right now and the gradual rotting of the whale is going to cause havoc on the community health-wise. A little bravery never hurts either. From exploding whales and the dangers of a riptide to life-saving flashlights and the benefits of chewing bubblegum. These next videos will not only inform you, but they will also protect you. 20 unknown facts that might save your life one day. <laughs> whales explode when they are dead. This is why touching a dead whale is so dangerous. When large whales pass away, one of these two things can occur. Either their bodies sink to the bottom of the ocean and go on to assist smaller life forms, or their bodies can wash up on a beach somewhere. The problem is that when a dead whale becomes beached, decomposition starts almost instantly. The whale's body gases start to bloat the carcass, and the heat of the sunlight only aggravates this horrifying process. As the expansion of gases takes place in the dead whale's body, a thick layer of blubber and skin stops it all from escaping. You're essentially left with a rubber balloon that's being filled from the inside. And that's why beachgoers are always urged to keep away from and not touch a dead beached whale. Gaseous pressure inside the whale accumulates to risky levels. It can have explosive effects. Even the slightest prod can disrupt the trapped gases and the individual. And if it explodes close to you, it can lead to devastating or fatal injuries. It can take some 30 years for a sunken carcass to decompose, a process that plays an important ecological role. These so-called whale falls are regularly scavenged by everything from sharks to bone-eating worms. Ice can make you sick. When you're really hot or really sick, sucking on an ice cube or two can provide immediate relief. It's an easy way to cool down or rehydrate when you're too nauseated to drink water. But if you're compulsively chowing down on ice on a regular basis, there may be something deeper going on. The compulsion to eat ice is a form of pica. Pica is a disorder that involves eating things that are not necessarily food and have little to no nutritional value. This can include ice, dirt, paper, and more. People with certain mental illnesses like schizophrenia or OCD can sometimes develop pica as a coping mechanism. Even something as seemingly simple as stress can cause pica. Moreover, studies have also proven that this habit can be a sign of a few serious physical, mental, and emotional illnesses. As for eating snow, scientists have found that new snow can contain weird stuff including pesticides, soot, and even nasties such as mercury and formaldehyde. All of these things are found at extremely low levels, which means it's technically safe to eat. However, here's the good news. If you eat a little snow at home because of a storm has passed and you're having fun, it's really not a huge deal. Blue lights steal your sleep. Who hasn't reached for our computer or smartphone after getting into bed? In fact, experts think that 90% of Americans report using an electronic device in their bedroom within an hour of trying to fall asleep. Unfortunately, screens on these devices can emit blue light that interferes with our natural sleep cycles. Blue light in particular is an important way to help our body naturally prepare for sleep. What is blue light? Light is composed of electromagnetic radiation, which is an invisible form of energy. Our eyes interpret colors of light based on the amount of energy they contain. Rainbows show us the entire spectrum of visible light. White light, like the light emitted by the sun, is the combination of all the colors of the visible light spectrum. Blue light is a portion of the visible light spectrum that can have unique effects on alertness, hormone production, and sleep cycles. This wavelength of light is emitted by LED and fluorescent lights, as well as many electronic devices. Blue light stimulates parts of the brain that make us feel alert, elevating our body temperature and heart rate. During the day, blue light can improve performance and attention. At night, however, blue light can literally steal our sleep. Put your devices to bed before you go to sleep. You can start a fire with a battery. All the survival gear in the world can't keep you safe if it gets damaged or isn't in your possession when you need it. You have to prepare your mental toolkit to be effective to save yourself and your family. Fortunately, when you need a field expedient way to start a fire, you have plenty of options using common everyday items, a battery, gum wrappers, and steel wool. 
Firstly, to make fire with this method, you'll need a single D-cell battery and a paper-lined foil gum wrapper. The wrapper should be torn or cut so that it just is a thin bridge of wrapper connecting the two larger ends that will be held to the battery's terminals. The easiest way to do this is to fold the wrapper in half lengthwise and use scissors to snip out a triangle from the center. That leaves about 1 16th of an inch of material. Span the wrapper from one end of the battery to the other and hold it in place. It should soon smoke and with luck create a small flame at the thinnest point of the wrapper. Secondly, a small amount of steel wool and a battery is all you need. By touching the steel to the positive and negative terminals of the battery, you'll quickly produce a ball of burning fibers, which can be placed into tinder and blown into a flame. An overloaded keyring could hurt your car. Keyrings have a very important role in all of our everyday lives, holding keys and keeping them safe in our pockets. However, keyrings can hold much more than just keys. There's fobs, supermarket points cards, figurines, tokens, and mementos too. Today, we'll be examining the truth in the rumor that heavy keychains can potentially cause damage to your car's ignition. Truth is, a multitude of keys on your keyring can actually cause damage to your vehicle's ignition. The weight of a cluttered keyring, coupled with a low gravity works, can weigh down a vehicle's ignition, which could cause the ignition to fail. The heavy weight of multiple keys will place a burden on the car key, and therefore the ignition switch, while driving. The weight of a bundle of keys together with the effects from bumps and vibrations can cause the lock housing to wear prematurely, and eventually lead to your vehicle's starter failing. In extreme cases, the ignition switch is tugged out and the motor shuts off. To keep your ignition switch in good working order for many years, keep your car key on a light keychain that holds no more than one or two other keys. Heeding this advice could spare you a huge repair expense in the long run. Green potatoes are toxic to humans. The average American eats about 124 pounds of potatoes per year. Though you may only see a few varieties in the grocery store, mainly russet, Yukon Gold, and Red Bliss. There are hundreds of potatoes grown around the world, and new ones are being created all the time. But you want to avoid green potatoes. All overgreening is typically caused when potatoes are improperly stored at home or sit on display at your grocery store. While the bright lights make it easy to shop and make the product look beautiful, those same lights can cause the potatoes to start turning green. When exposure to light causes potatoes to produce chlorophyll, it can also encourage the production of certain compounds that protect against damage from insects, bacteria, fungi, or hungry animals. Unfortunately, these compounds can be toxic to humans. Solanine, the main toxin that potatoes produce, works by inhibiting an enzyme involved in breaking down certain neurotransmitters. That said, you are unlikely to ingest enough solanine from eating green potatoes to do you any serious harm. You can peel away the greening, a little won't hurt, and use the potatoes as you normally would. However, if these potatoes taste bitter after peeling, then it's best not to eat them. Always keep a pack of gum around. A piece of gum can make or break a kiss, save you from offending a coworker with your post-lunch breath, or give you that little refresher your mouth needs. But did you also know chewing gum has loads of health benefits? Here are some of the perks. According to studies, chewing gum can slightly curb your cravings, which may help you make better eating choices. On average, the gum chewers in the study ate 36 fewer calories than those who didn't chew gum. That doesn't sound all that impressive, but if you cut 36 calories out of your diet every day, it adds up. Sure, you only burn 11 calories an hour from chewing a stick of gum, but times that by several hours and you may be shaving an extra 50 plus calories from your day. As long as it's sugarless, chewing gum for 20 minutes after you eat can help protect your teeth by removing food debris and increasing your saliva flow. Your saliva strengthens your tooth enamel because it carries phosphate and calcium. Dentists actually recommend chewing gum to prevent cavities. Plus, chewing gum can make you smarter. When you chew gum, it increases blood flow to your brain. This has a lot of positive effects including improving your memory, staying alert, and fighting depression. Don't walk downstairs with your hands in your pockets. Although busting a move with your body on a staircase in a very public place might be a way to create a buzz and impress followers, people really shouldn't walk up and down stairs with their hands in their pockets. You need your hands to protect your head or stop your fall. Whether at work, at home, or out in public, falling down the stairs is a significant worry for many people. 
as an accident that can result in life-changing injuries, it's important to know how you can prevent these from happening as soon as possible. Stair accident statistics are some of the highest injuries listed each year, both in the USA and abroad. In a 2017 study, it was found that every year there is an average of over 1 million injuries that come as a result of falling down the stairs. Every year there's an average of 12,000 deaths as a result of stairway accidents. As the second leading cause of accidental injury in the country, it's a statistic that can't be ignored. Stairway safety should always be at the forefront of your mind every time you use stairs. Stair safety products such as handrails, non-slip stair treads, and anti-slip coatings provide users with peace of mind. And if you're going to dance, keep your hands in the air. Apple cider vinegar can be used to treat wounds. Apple cider vinegar is everywhere these days. Everybody talks about it, and everybody seems to love it. Is this just a new hype, or is apple cider vinegar actually amazing? Are there actual health benefits of apple cider vinegar? More people are trying to improve their life by making healthier and more natural choices these days, and that's why you'll see apple cider vinegar pretty much anywhere there's a conversation about health, food, and natural remedies. But the truth is, apple cider vinegar was used as a natural remedy for health problems for a very long period of time. In fact, it's an ancient remedy. It seems that we're becoming more aware of those benefits these days, from treating wounds and deep cleaning your hair to making salad dressing. It only takes a quick internet search to know there is no shortage of uses for apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar also has a hefty history outside of the kitchen, as a folk remedy in the health and beauty realms. Vinegar has been used as a remedy since the days of ancient Greece, when healers used it to disinfect and treat wounds. Other than that, it has remained an elusive old wives tale for centuries until it regained traction again as a means to promote weight loss, regulate blood sugar, and yes, even treat eczema. Sit at the back of the plane. The next time you go to book your plane tickets, you may want to head to the back of the plane cabin. Most people often opt for seats nearer the front so they can get off the plane quickly when it lands. Not only that, but first class gets some of the best perks and they are always at the front of the plane. But if you choose to go to the very back of the cabin, you are more likely to get free things and additional items such as pillows and food, according to the cabin crew. Backseat passengers are likely to receive VIP treatment purely due to their location on the aircraft. Why? The passengers at the back of the plane are seen by fewer travelers. So if they get slipped an extra drink or a set of toiletries, it's more likely to go unnoticed. Flight attendants like to avoid responding to call bells from the front of the plane because answering one means potentially flaunting whatever item the passenger has requested to everyone else along the way. This can cause a problem since planes often don't have enough extra alcohol pillows, earplugs, and toothbrushes, or the time on the shorter flights to deviate from the service schedule. But sitting at the back won't save you from the rude and inappropriate passengers. Just saying. Keep your car keys by your bedside table. Most of us know the basics about how to make our homes less desirable to thieves. Get a security system installed. Put one of those stickers in your window. Keep a light on with a timer when you're traveling. Get a dog who loves to bark, etc. But what do you do if you think someone is breaking in anyway? You wouldn't want to do this every time you hear a little rustling outside. That's a surefire way to make your neighbors want to egg your house. But in an emergency, a piercing car alarm is a great way to get some attention. Giving car keys a permanent home on your bedside table is a sure way to never lose them again. And it can ward off suspicious activity. If you hear an unusual noise and suspect that someone is trying to break into your car or home, press the panic button on your keyring. The car alarm will sound, and the intruder will have no choice but to flee. Of course, in order for this to work, you'll have to get into the habit of stashing your keys beside your bed, and not on the hook right beside your front door, which is admittedly more convenient. But if rehoming your keys isn't going to work, pull out the spare key fob you never use, or get a second set of keys made. That panic button could save your life, even in your own house. Potatoes are a good survival food. In the film The Martian, Matt Damon's character is stranded on Mars with nothing to eat but potatoes. Besides feeling the benefits of weight loss with increased energy levels and already reducing his chances of developing diabetes and other chronic conditions, what will happen in the long term? Eating around 6 pounds of potatoes a day will provide just over 2,000 calories. 
a reasonable amount for an adult. But while potatoes are an excellent source of carbohydrates and fiber, you may struggle to get enough protein. An adult male may need up to 3 ounces of protein, but this diet will provide only 2 ounces. Potatoes are also low in fat, so a potato diet doesn't supply enough of the two essential fatty acids, nor does it provide enough fat to aid the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. We should also eat foods containing healthy fatty acids, of which the only reasonable dietary source is oily fish. These fats have specific structural and functional roles in cell membranes, can act as hormones, and help to control blood pressure. Eating only one food probably won't do any harm in the short term. However, there is no known food that supplies all of the needs of human adults on a long-term basis. Potatoes can definitely help you survive, but they probably won't make you thrive. If you are walking to your car in a dark place, have your keys in your hand. Millions of times every day around the world, people walk to and from their vehicles without incident. However, incidents like street harassment or crime such as robberies, carjackings, kidnappings, assaults, and even murder are committed around vehicles. The increased vulnerability occurs with distractions of daily life, getting to the appointments, opening the car door, putting things into the vehicle, getting inside it, and closing the car door. Criminals know this. Everyone is most vulnerable to attack during the first few seconds while getting in and out of a car. That's why you keep your keys in your hand. The panic button on most new models can trigger the alarm, and a single key can be used as a weapon. Most times when approaching your automobile does not involve a threat. But following a few routine safety measures can make it harder for an assailant to attack you around a vehicle. Number 1. Pre-plan your trips before leaving the house or any building reduce the chances of being attacked. Number 2. Walk with others. Before walking to your vehicle, ask for an escort or wait for other people to leave the building. And make sure everyone safely gets to their car and drives off together. Number 3. Go back inside if you're sensing potential dangers. Swim parallel to the shore. A rip current, commonly referred to as a riptide, is a fast-flowing current of water that's moving offshore in a channel. So when you hit the beach for a swim this summer, watch out for dangerous rip currents that can carry you offshore very quickly. They are difficult to spot for the untrained eye, but can look like a darker body of water, or in between two breaking waves. The water may look the calmest there, but it's actually the most dangerous. They can also exist along structural rifts in the water, where you can see water alongside the structure moving offshore. And when swimmers are caught in something like that, the natural instinct may be to swim back to shore. But they would only be trying to fight a very strong current. Here's the trick. Swimmers need to swim parallel to the beach, or just float it out until they can get to a spot where the water is safe for them to go back to the shore. Changing weather conditions also make it harder for people to realize the true danger of the water they're in. Earlier in the day, they may be able to stand in the water, and it's fine. But with changes in winds or big waves that come through, it could look very different later in the day. So, when a riptide pulls you out, just swim parallel to the shore. Baking soda can help put out fires in a pinch. If you bake a lot, you are probably very familiar with baking soda, which is the fine white powder used to help the dough rise. It is the star ingredient in creating fluffy pancakes, cakes, and other baked goods. Baking soda is not just widely used in cooking and baking. Mixing vinegar and baking soda is wonderful for general household cleaning. Given its wide use in daily life, we can't help but wonder, is baking soda flammable? The answer is no. Baking soda is not flammable. It's not combustible, and it does not catch fire. Baking soda is not a fire hazard, so it's perfectly safe to use. The reason behind baking soda not being flammable is that it requires a lot of heat, which is much more than you use in ordinary cooking, to break down its molecules. Is it fire resistant? What happens when you heat baking soda over a fire? In fact, baking soda chemically extinguishes a small fire. When you throw baking soda on a fire, it starves it from oxygen. When a fire lacks oxygen, it won't be able to sustain itself, so the fire dies out. Of course, baking soda is most effective in minor fires. You can put out a fire when you throw baking soda into a grease fire. A dry chemical fire extinguisher even uses baking soda as one of its active ingredients. Aspirin during heart attack Many people worry about experiencing a heart attack in their lifetime, and with good reason. It's estimated that an American has a heart attack every 40 seconds. Even though a heart attack can be deadly, tens of thousands of people survive heart attacks every year. 
Acting quickly when you suspect a heart attack is coming on can really improve your chances of survival. Most of the time, heart attacks start slowly with just mild discomfort and pain, giving warning signs before they strike. If you experience any of the following symptoms, call 911 and take an aspirin, and this is why. Here's a hypothetical situation. You've always been healthy, but you seem to run out of steam at your wife's birthday dinner. And now your chest feels heavy, as if you're in a vice. You call your wife, and after calling 911, she brings you an aspirin and some water. Your wife got it right. Aspirin works by slowing the blood's ability to clot and minimizes the size of the blood clots that might have formed. Once the first responders arrive, they will transport you to the hospital, where you receive care for the specific type of heart attack you had. A heart attack is a dynamic event, and early intervention can limit the damage. Point out an individual during an emergency. Emergencies have the potential to cause serious harm to people, property, the economy, and the environment. Protecting yourself and your loved ones will depend on the hazard, but these tips can help you manage emergencies and disasters safely. Safety first! Don't be afraid to help, but don't become part of the emergency. Use extreme caution near roadways or in hazardous environments. Take a few extra seconds to stop traffic or put on your life jacket. Recognize that an emergency is happening. Whether you're dealing with a friend or a stranger, if something seems wrong, ask if they are okay. Call for help. This may be as simple as dialing 911 on your cell phone. The sooner you call, the sooner help arrives. But be sure you know the following, where you are. The more specific you can be, the easier it is to find you. Remember, most cell phones have a GPS that you can use to figure out where you are if you are disoriented. Remain on the line with emergency services. Don't hang up. Patiently answer all questions. Answer the phone if they call you back. They might be having trouble finding you. Talk to your patient. Reassure them that more help is on the way. And when you see help is near, always point out the individual during an emergency. A flashlight can be used as a self-defense weapon. Are you seeking a simple and convenient way to protect yourself? If the answer is yes, then maybe a daily defense flashlight is your first option. It is handy and easy to operate. There is no other better choice than a tactical flashlight. Unlike traditional LED light, a defense tactical flashlight can sport a brighter and more focused beam, which can identify the threats as well as disorient the attackers in some dangerous situations. And it can also provide a signal for help, greatly increasing the chances of saving a life. To choose a proper tactical flashlight for self-defense, it has to be small in size and as simple as possible first. When it comes to defending yourself, one of the most important tools at your disposal is the element of surprise. If you are aware that there is an attacker nearby and approaching you, you can respond preemptively by shining your tactical flashlight directly into their eyes. Using the head of the flashlight, strike your attacker either with a downward stabbing motion or a forward thrusting motion. Some tactical flashlights will even have beveled edges around the head of the flashlight to focus on the striking area and do more damage. The right tactical flashlight can mean the difference between life and death. If you are lost on a hike, look for fences or streams. If you do find yourself lost, stay calm, don't panic. Retrace your steps in your mind. What landmarks did you see? Do you have any photos that will help you find your way back? Absolutely do not move until you have calmed down and had time to think about your situation in a clear manner. If you are on a trail, stay on the trail, since you clearly use the path to get where you are. If you have a compass, take it out and use the tool to better understand your location. As a last resort, follow a stream or drainage downhill. A stream will typically lead to a road or trail. It will keep you from wandering in circles. You'll have a supply of water. You can always backtrack by walking back upstream if you have to, for instance, if the stream leads to an impassable water or cliff. You can leave indications for search and rescue so that they know exactly where to look for you if they find evidence of your passing. It also has the advantage of simply being a plan, which is more important than it might seem. If you find a fence, even better. That's a good sign you're on someone's property. And more often than not, there will be people around. Getting lost while hiking can be terrifying but it's when you most need your wits about you. Check the locks of your house if strangers have been in your home. If you've ever seen a heist movie, you know that thieves leave nothing to chance. Everything is painstakingly planned out, and that includes casing the target location. Home burglaries are no different. Would-be burglars typically identify potential targets days or even weeks in advance by monitoring neighborhoods to learn which houses are vulnerable. They return again and again to gather additional information about the area, the property, the homeowners, and any home security measures that might be in place. 
in order to beat them at their own game, you need to know the tricks and techniques they use to case the outside and inside of your home. A modern home security system protects the three major zones, the perimeter of your property, the perimeter of your house, and inside your home. Gates, fences, motion sensors, lights, cameras, security system signs or stickers, closed curtains or blinds, sturdy locks, beware of dog signs, and more are all fantastic deterrents on the outside of your home. A full 33% of home burglaries are unlawful entry, meaning the burglar gained access without having to break a lock door or window. 79% of break-ins happen via either the front door, first floor window, or back door. Making sure everything is locked up tight is the simplest and most powerful deterrent. The more you know, right? These helpful tips can make such a difference in a crisis, and it's better to be informed than to be in the dark. Do you agree? Like and subscribe if you do, and stick around for more valuable info.